Hello everyone, Beata here and welcome back to Fibers and Fabrics Season 2. Today we are looking at greenwashing, what it is, what we can do and how to try and be a bit more immune to it. Greenwashing is when usually the PR and marketing departments of a firm comes together and forms a misleading message to try and persuade customers to buy the product or services of the company because it is more green, it is more eco-friendly, it is more sustainable. But please note that greenwashing is when it is misleading. It is not when it's the truth and when they are actually implementing greener and more sustainable ways and markets that. That is not greenwashing. It is only when it is misleading. The challenge is that all of us define being green differently. For some of us, it can be going completely vegan and not wear any synthetic fibers. And for some of us, it can be meatless Mondays. Both of those individuals and companies that try and convey consumers to do a certain thing might think that that one change is environmentally friendly, more sustainable and the better way of doing things. There is no complete um, definition of what the perfect life or the perfect organization is, right? Therefore, a lot of companies feel like they might be green where a, another company might judge them and think, that is not being green at all. Look at us, we're doing so much more. In the world of fashion and textiles, the one thing that comes to mind immediately as an example is vegan leather. The other day I saw a brand launching a new product and the product comes in a vegan leather bag. And consumers were going crazy in the review section saying like, why are you calling it vegan leather if it's just plastic? Don't call it vegan leather, you're making it sound different to what it actually is. And that is a great example of what that, those consumers thought of that product and they see that as greenwashing. And I must agree, I also think that is a form of greenwashing. In the past, this bag used to be called plastic leather. Later on, people called this perhaps PU or polyurethane. Maybe then it was called pleather, faux leather, and then we ended up with vegan leather. <laughs> so this type of textile went through quite a bit of renaming in order to get to the point where it was called vegan leather. Vegan leather, in my opinion, out of all of those names, sounding the most pleasant on the ear because I have a very positive connotation towards going vegan. It is healthy, it is cruelty free, but at the end of the day, this is still just plastic, right? So renaming this doesn't change the object. It doesn't change what it actually is. And therefore, a lot of consumers have an issue with a pair of leggings um, with that very smooth shine to it being called a vegan leather legging when in fact it is actually just plastic. On Instagram I saw a great example the other day and I'll just have it up close as well. Um, it is of these melting shoes and the melting shoes is was called vegan leather you know shoes but um, put outside on a tar road, it was melting completely and it just showed, um, tried to show consumers the concept of it is being advertised as one thing, but in fact it is something else. Um, and that is essentially what greenwashing is, right? It is trying to persuade someone that it is greener than what it is. Going back to the world of textiles, um, we also have a lot of vegan silk these days and we see that in the synthetic and semi-synthetic categories where a lot of fabrics have that smooth, shiny, soft you know, finish to it, at least when you look at it. Sometimes when you touch it, you can feel that it is fake immediately. Um, and in my opinion, you can also see when someone is wearing fake um, silk. But even that is now being marketed as vegan silk. 
Some might see that as greenwashing, others may not. I quickly want to touch on food, although the series is focused on fibers and fabrics, but we see a lot of fake meats um, being advertised and being sold at fast food change. Um, chains and even something such as McDonald's is now coming out with their own version of a plant-based meat. Um, it is called MacPlant and it's in perfectly green boxes as we can expect. And it is definitely marketed as something green, better, healthier even, better for you, better for the environment. When in fact, I truly still believe that it is fast food and it shouldn't have a place in anyone's diet or at least very, very limited. It is still a refined, unhealthy food which will not equal health to the consumer in the long run. Nor is it a solution to change our planet into a greener planet. So with all of that being said, I still feel personally that we should encourage each and every small change that an individual or a company makes in order to become more green. We shouldn't criticize each other and companies too much because that kind of stops the growth, especially in individuals I've seen. If you judge someone for not being the perfect vegan, then they probably might, you know, ditch the whole thing of trying to become vegan because it's too hard to be perfect. Rather encourage someone doing meatless Mondays and share another recipe with them that it is so good that they might try it out on Tuesdays as well. I'm not a fan of greenwashing. I think it's awful that people lie in order to sell more goods um, on a false premise and that is definitely something that I do not want to support. Therefore, my tips to you that I feel can help you kind of escape this greenwashing trap. First of all, use what you have, whatever is in your closet and stop buying so many new things. Alter what you have if it doesn't fit you well and remember that things can be mended, things don't um, have to be thrown away, missing buttons or something that comes loose can easily be sewn back. Just get a seamstress or a tailor um, and befriend them. You can have such a beautiful closet if you spend a little bit more time altering clothes and taking care of the things that you already have. If you would like to experiment with a new color or a new style or something that's maybe trendy, rather go thrift shopping and have it mended or altered um, in the way that you would like to wear it. That way it saves you as well as the planet and you get some time to really experience that certain color or style before you invest in something that is a bit more expensive and high quality. And then thirdly, if you've done one and two and you really want to buy something, there's a gap in your closet, I recommend buying the highest quality item that you can afford. That way you are definitely going to buy a higher quality item that's going to last you a much longer period of time. Do you have any great examples of greenwashing? Are you frustrated by it? What is your opinion? Let me know in the comments down below. I hope that you've enjoyed this video today and I hope you're all doing very well. Thank you everyone. Bye.